Hi guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the ChemEng student. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the difference between absorption and adsorption. This is the second video in our April competition, whereby you can win £1,000 every month for an entire year. So be sure to check out the question at the end of this video. So before we look at the key characteristics of each uh, system, it's important that we define some key terms that we're going to use overall. And we're going to use a very simple and basic diagram. And this one here refers to the process of adsorption, but it would be exactly the same if it were for absorption as well. And I'm going to just use adsorption as the reference here, but the same thing applies to absorption. If we consider the adsorbent, then this is the substance that is being adsorbed. This is the thing that is either going to adhere to the surface or enter the material. That particular material or the bulk material is what's known as the adsorbate. So that would be things like, um, say for example, a sponge. Then the sponge would be the absorbate, and say for example, the water, that would be the absorbent. And likewise, the same thing is you just change the D to a B. That's the, the principle is exactly the same. So if we look at absorption as an example first, then if we were to define what absorption actually means, then it's essentially a phenomenon in which a fluid gets absorbed completely into the surface of an absorbent. Now what that means is, in a graphical sense, what we have here is we have these individual molecules, and what they do is they can bind themselves to the surface but they can also enter the material itself. And we can refer to this as a bulk phenomenon. So we've got a couple of examples in the next slide, but again, I'll use the example of water, that if you can imagine that these individual particles are water molecules, and you have the, the gray area, which say for example is a sponge, then you obviously can have the water on the face of the sponge, but you can also have the water that enters the sponge. So if you have a system whereby one, say, species can fully diffuse and enter into the other, you have an absorption process. Now the process is generally considered to be endothermic in that it consumes energy in order for this to actually work. And that says when we think about it in terms of chemicals or a reaction taking place, not a physical absorption, we're talking chemical, then that's when we would consider the endothermic process. Now if we consider the effect of, and in this case that should be an, a B, the absorption concentration, then if we consider that, then we can say that it would be uniform throughout the entire system because as it diffuses through the membrane, and into the bulk material, then eventually over a period of time, the concentration of the absorbent would become uniform. So it would stabilize and reach some form of equilibrium. Now that also follows the Beer-Lambert law in the sense that the relationship would actually become linear. So the Beer-Lambert law helps us deduce for example, in my research, uh, we look at the concentration of microalgae um, that we can actually deduce the dry weight. And the way that we do that is we exploit the Beer-Lambert law because we measure the amount of light that has been absorbed by the microalgae. And we can create what's called calibration curves and that allows us to deduce the concentration. So it follows the Beer-Lambert law. That's very useful for those of you interested in physics. Now similarly, if we consider in terms of the rate of a reaction, then the rate of the reaction we would say would be uniform throughout the entire reaction. So there would be no points at which the rate would be higher at one compared to the other, because if we come back to this idea of uniform 
concentration, then we would have a uniform reaction rate. And again, two examples here. I've used the example of absorption of water by a sponge, but you could also have the absorption of uh, light by plants in order to promote photosynthesis. Now, granted, if you consider the idea of photosynthesis, so you have the light particles coming in like so, we could have some light particles like that. Granted, you will have some that reflect off but the bulk of the light will be absorbed inside the plant. So that's a, another example of an absorption process. Now, if we consider adsorption, then it's basically, it's a similar principle, but instead of the atoms, the molecules, or the ions being able to enter the bulk material or the, the absorbent, it can only adhere to the surface. And what that means is we tend to refer to it as a surface phenomenon. In that, you have your absorbent, but these particular uh, molecules cannot actually enter inside the material. So what you have is surface adhesion to the particles or the solid material that you have here. And again, this can be atoms, it could be molecules, it could be ions of any substance. So that is the, that's the key, if you want to say, physical difference between absorption and adsorption. But if we look at it from the, the stance of the characteristics again, then this time adsorption can be deemed an exothermic process, i.e. when those particles adhere to the surface, that gives out a small amount of energy. And depending on the velocity of these particles when they adhere to the surface can give out a lot of energy. So you tend to assume that the adsorption process in general is an exothermic process. And if we consider this time the concentration, then this time it wouldn't be uniform because the concentration would decrease significantly from the surface to the bottom. Because over time, if you have a surface like so, that's your hard surface, and over time, you get this one single layer of particles that adhere to the surface. And over time, these will start to bulk on top of each other. So you have this ununiform distribution. You can see that it's thicker here and here. There's a difference in the thickness. So you have this ununiform system. Now, that then again has implications in terms of the rate of the reaction. In that, the rate of the reaction will steadily increase until an equilibrium is established. Because remember, in any chemical reaction, you'll always have an equilibrium between the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse. So you have adsorption and desorption. So those rates, when they reach, then you'll reach a steady state equilibrium rate. But up until that point, the rate of the reaction will steadily increase until that point is reached. It won't be uniform like it was in absorption. And examples of these would be things like the adsorption of water vapor on silica gel. So the gel itself, if you were to look at it, the gel would have the liquid water, because it would sometimes condense, would have the water on the surface, but it would not enter the silica gel. Likewise, a lot of the time in um, chemistry and chemical engineering, we talk about activated carbon, which is used as a catalyst. So that in itself has adsorption properties because what we want is our reactants to bind to the surface of the activated carbon to then catalyze the reaction. So that's another industrial application of adsorption. Now, it's worth noting that adsorption can be further broken down into two categories. We can have what's called physical absorption and we can have chemical adsorption. And there is a key distinction between the two, and it's kind of in the name, that physical absorption is a simple adhesion of two different materials, 
to different molecules, to different compounds, they adhere to each other, and then they desorb, and that's it. They remain the same. In chemisorption, or chemical absorption, what you actually have is you have these sites, known as binding sites, whereby the particles will come in, they will enter the binding site, and there will be a reaction that takes place. That in itself is an application of the activated carbon. That facilitates a binding site whereby your reactants can come together and react in a more efficient manner. If you were to look at it in the sense of uh, the thickness with respect to time, what you, uh, sorry, temperature, what you have in physical absorption is a continuous decrease over as the temperature increases. So as the temperature increases, you get a decrease in the thickness. Whereas in this case for chemical, what we actually have here is it will increase to a certain point at the maximum and then it will begin to fall because you have the adsorption and the desorption process after the chemical reaction has taken place. Now granted, the, the notion and the topic of chemisorption and physical absorption, that could, we discuss a lot of that in our thermodynamics uh, videos and courses. I put a link in the description to them and you can check the ones out. But if you would like to learn more about these, then leave a comment in um, uh, below and tell us if you would like to see a video on a detailed explanation of the mechanics behind chemical and physical absorption. And just to summarize, the, the key distinctions between the two systems, because the reference, because there is a very subtle difference between the difference of a B and a D, it's sometimes a good idea to see it uh, summarized. The absorption is a bulk phenomenon, whereas adsorption is only on the surface. Endothermic, exothermic, we have non-uniformity of the adsorbent concentration for adsorption, but for absorption, we have a uniform concentration, which relates to a uniform rate of reaction. But with adsorption, we have a steadily increasing rate of reaction. And that's the key distinction between the two. One is on the surface, one enters the adsorbent. So now it's time to enter our uh, monthly competition. And in order to enter this month, um, all you have to do is answer the following question correctly. What factor would not be influenced the rate of absorption? So we have a list of some factors. Which one of these would not influence the rate of absorption? Would it be the temperature? Would it be the pressure, the surface area, the density, the light, or the pH? So all you have to do to enter is comment your answer to this video, like and subscribe to the channel, and make sure that you subscribe to the Facebook page because that's where we will um, announce the winner on the 5th of next month. Now entries close on the 30th of this month, so be sure that you comment your answer before the deadline. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the concept and the difference between absorption and adsorption. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.